This is your host Danny and this is series from English Plus podcast. In today's episode we're going to continue our series 100 events that change the world and today we're going to talk about 10 more events. We will start from the industrial revolution all the way to Alexander Graham Bell patenting the telephone. We will pass through important events like the French Revolution, the Trail of Tears, the spread of communism, the theory of evolution by Darwin, the world's bloodiest civil war, and more. With that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's dive right in our episode today. 100 events that changed the history of the world, starting from the very first event of today's episode, the Industrial Revolution. So our very first event for today's episode is about the Industrial Revolution, the steam engine that launches the Industrial Revolution. That happened in 1712. With the boom of Britain's coal fields came a need for a machine that could pump water out of the mines. The solution arrived in 1698 when English engineer Thomas Savory patented the first steam-driven engine which used the force of built-up steam to generate mechanical motion and drive a water pump. A few years later, Thomas Newcomen, a blacksmith who worked for Savory, perfected his boss's engine. His atmospheric steam engine invented in 1712 worked slowly, but it was safer than Savory's because it did not rely on dangerous high pressure. Newcomen's steam engine helped power the Industrial Revolution during the next 50 years. Then in 1765, after repairing one of Newcomen's engines, the Scottish inventor James Watt realized that its alternate heating and cooling processes wasted a lot of energy. His design, which collected the steam in a separate condenser, made the steam engine three times more efficient and would go on to replace the aging new common machines in Britain's coal mines. So that was about our first event. What about the second event for today's episode? An event that brought safety to the high seas. That's coming next. Well, this has to do with the chronometer. The chronometer brings safety to the high seas. That happened in 1761. For centuries, mariners had been plagued with the inability to determine longitude while at sea. Measuring longitude required the use of a clock, which compared the exact time on the ship with its starting point. The difference in time would tell how far west or east the ship was, making precise navigation possible. Yet inventing an accurate shipboard clock proved difficult. Fluctuating temperatures and the ship's movement affected performance. British clockmaker John Harrison first tried building clocks that replaced the pendulum with a circular balance. It took four attempts before his design for a chronometer was successful. Created in 1771, the successful chronometer was a sea watch with a stable, high-frequency balance housed in a silver case. Among the first to use Harrison's chronometer, British explorer Captain James Cook took it on his second voyage of exploration in 1772. And now the next event, it's all about revolution. The old and new world burst into revolution. That's coming next. That happened around 1776, when Britain needed to recoup its losses after the French and Indian War, it levied taxes on its American colonies. The colonists were outraged at being taxed without representation in Parliament. After King George III failed to address these grievances, the colonists took up arms in 1775, starting the American Revolution. A year later, 56 delegates from the 13 colonies signed the Declaration of Independence, justifying their separation from Britain. In 1783, King George III recognized America's independence, ending the American Revolution. Meanwhile, the French were increasingly unhappy with their nation's debt, exuberant taxes, and food shortages. The colony's declaration of man's unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness inspired leaders of the French Revolution. 
On July the 14th, 1789, Parisians stormed the Bastille, a prison fortress that symbolized the monarchy's abuses. Soon after, the National Assembly drafted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. It proclaimed new rights, speech, press, and religion, and declared free male citizens equal. In 1792, leaders of the revolution abolished the monarchy and later beheaded King Louis XVI and thousands of others who they believed opposed their radical government. The revolution ended in 1799 when a coup d'etat brought Napoleon Bonaparte to power. For our next event, we're not going far from revolutions. We're going to talk about the Russian Decembrists and how they threatened the Tsarist power. That's coming next. That happened in 1825, when Russian officers returned home from Europe after the Napoleonic Wars in 1815. They brought back ideas about human rights, opposition to serfdom, and interest in democracy. The officers and their upper-class brethren made demands for a representative government and talked of overthrowing the current government until Tsar Alexander I died at age 48 in 1825. Constantine was next in line, but he gave up his right to the throne despite the army's sworn allegiance to him. When his younger brother Nicholas was named Tsar, a group of 3,000 Russian officers and soldiers, wanting a liberal constitution, refused to swear their allegiance to him. In December 1825, the Decembrists, they adopted the name of the month their revolt took place, staged a revolt in Senate Square in St. Petersburg. Though their demands were modest and the rebellion easily suppressed, Nicholas was deeply alarmed by the events. The Decembrist revolt had lasting effects on how Nicholas ruled. He formed the Third Section, a secret police of spies and informants. Religions, apart from the Orthodox Church, were suppressed, and literature critical of Russia was censored. The revolt was the beginning of a revolutionary movement that would lead first to the abolition of serfdom in 1861, then to the overturn of the Tsarist government by communists in 1917. So that was our 54th event that changed the world. What about the 55th event? Well, this one has to do with the Cherokee Nation and what is today known as the Trail of Tears. That's coming next. So our event here is the Cherokee Nation suffers on Trail of Tears. That happened between 1838 and 1839. The European encroachment on Native American tribes had been happening since Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon first explored the North American mainland in 1513. But one of the worst inequities the tribes suffered occurred three centuries later as a result of the Indian Removal Act passed by Congress in 1830. The Indian Removal Act allowed President Andrew Jackson to take Indian land east of the Mississippi in exchange for lands to the west. To take control of the land, the Cherokee Nation was led into a forced march, now called the Trail of Tears, in the winter of 1838 to 1839. About 4,000 Native Americans died on the march from Georgia to the Indian Territory, which is present-day Oklahoma. As Americans settled farther west, they further encroached on the Indians' lands. The Indian Territory was subsumed by the United States in 1907 when Oklahoma became a state. Today, the American Indian movement continues to fight for reparations and the return of Indian lands. And now we come to the 56th event that changed the world, and that one has to do with the spread of communism. That's coming next. This one happened in 1848 when Marx and Engels spread communism. The implementation of new technologies during the Industrial Revolution resulted in the emergence of a growing pool of wage laborers, the working class who worked long hours in dangerous factory conditions for low pay and lived in squalid worker housing. German philosopher Karl Marx believed that these conditions could only lead to unrest between the ruling class and the ruled. In 1848, he and German economist Friedrich Engels teamed up to write the Communist Manifesto. 
The manifesto instructed workers that their duty was to free all of mankind from repression and injustice, creating a classless society. It conceptualized a new historic philosophical theory that became the foundation for the revolutionary workers' movements of the 20th century. The Communist Manifesto became one of the most widely read documents during the next century, inspiring the communist movement in the Soviet Union, Vietnam, and Cuba, among other countries. And now we come to our 57th event that changed the world, and that one has to do with Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution. That's coming next. This event happened in 1859. And here we're talking about Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution. Charles Darwin was born in Shrewsbury, England, and he was the grandson of Erasmus Darwin, a physician whose writings explored the question of familial inheritance and the son of R. W. Darwin, a medical doctor. His father hoped he would follow in his footsteps, but Darwin could not abide the sight of blood. Darwin's dream was to become a naturalist, so he eagerly signed on to be a geologist and dinner companion for Robert Fitzroy, the captain of the HMS Beagle, who had been commissioned by the Royal Navy to survey the coast of South America. During the five-year journey, Darwin spent most of his time off-ship collecting plants, animals, and fossils, and making observations that would lead to his theory of evolution. During his time on the Galapagos Islands, he noted that the largest islands were far enough apart that they developed their own flora and fauna. The finches on the various islands, for example, had developed different beaks adapted to the available food. These kinds of observations led to his theory of natural selection, which held that the survival or extinction of an organism was determined by its ability to adapt to the environment. Species that were better adapted would survive and produce stronger offspring, while those that weren't as adept had less success at survival. Darwin returned home with a diary filled with 800 pages of observations, and he began to reflect on his research. Eventually, this led to his radical theory that species, including humans, were not immutable. Instead of being created in God's image, humans had evolved from ancient ancestors just like other forms of life. Darwin theorized that evolution occurs gradually as a result of chance mutations. As favorable mutations are passed on throughout generations, the entire species gradually changes. Darwin did not understand how this process works, but in 1856, Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, conducted experiments with pea plants that uncovered the laws of heredity. The theory of evolution was influenced by the work of British geologist Charles Lyell, who in 1830 argued that the Earth was continually shaped by environmental and geological forces. The hypotheses meant that the Earth's age should be measured in millions of years rather than the thousands biblical scholars suggested. In 1589, Darwin published On the Origin of Species. His theory of evolution challenged contemporary beliefs about the creation of life on Earth and set off heated discussions about its implications. Today, these debates persist as groups such as youth earth creationists promote creation science, the idea that an intelligent being or God created earth and all its creatures, even though Darwin's theories were vindicated by the discovery of DNA in 1953 and the mapping of the human genome in 2003. So that was our 57th event. Now for our 58th event, the world's bloodiest civil war. That's coming next. That happened in 1864. During the mid-19th century, China was rocked by a series of natural calamities, including droughts, famines, and floods. The Manchu dynasty did little to relieve the widespread misery, which inflamed popular resentment against the government into the largest uprising in modern Chinese history. This became the bloodiest civil war the world has ever known, the Taiping Rebellion. 
Hong Ziu Quan, who claimed to be the younger brother of Jesus Christ, believed he had been sent to earth to eradicate demons and establish the heavenly kingdom of great peace, or Taiping. In the process, he planned to overthrow China's rulers. After proclaiming himself king, Hong founded a new order of Christian beliefs mixed with Chinese utopian ideas in which the peasantry communally owned and tilled the land. His philosophy recognized women as men's social and economic equals. He condemned slavery, the practice of foot binding for women, torture, and opium smoking. With his promises of economic and social equality, Hong attracted many followers. In 1851, he launched an uprising in the southern province of Guizhou for 14 years. Hong's armies attacked towns across China. Eventually, his organization began to disintegrate and the rebellion ended with Hong's suicide in 1864. An estimated 20 to 30 million people were killed in the bloody conflict. And now for our next event, Plastic. That's coming next. That happened in 1869. John Wesley Hyatt, an American printer and inventor, was searching for a substitute to ivory for making billiard balls when he combined cellulose nitrate and camphor, unintentionally producing the first plastic celluloid. Celluloid, it turned out, could be molded into an infinite variety of items, but unfortunately it caught fire easily. In the early 1900s, researchers came up with a less flammable material called cellulose acetate, which is still used to make films, fibers, and molded objects today. Subsequent inventors produced polymers that were manipulated into nylon, the rigid plastic known as PVC, and polyethylene, which came to dominate the market. Today, plastic's versatility is unparalleled. It is used in everything from clothes and pipes to squeeze bottles and adhesives. Despite their usefulness, polymers do not break down readily. Thus, plastics contribute heavily to environmental waste. Current solutions are recycling and the use of biodegradable plastics, first introduced in the 1970s. And now for the last event for today's episode, and that is when Alexander Graham Bell patents the telephone. That's coming next. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell patents the telephone. This one happened in 1876. Alexander Graham Bell was a teacher to the deaf who spent his spare hours working with an American mechanic, Thomas Watson. In 1876, Bell filed a patent for a device that would transmit sound via electricity, the telephone. Bell had first successfully tested the design, which contained a liquid transmitter, on March the 10th, 1876. When he spoke through it to his assistant down the hall, he said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Bell's telephone was preceded by the telegraph in 1837. But within a year of that first phone call, the first private telephone lines had been strung. Telecommunications spread quickly with the arrival of urban phone exchanges in 1881, long-distance calling in 1915, and then international calling in 1927. In the 1980s, more efficient fiber-optic lines began replacing copper telephone wires and wireless cellular telephone services were introduced. Today, the smartphone uses satellites rather than electric telephone lines to transmit voices and data. And with this event, we come to the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed our 10 events for today. Don't forget about the link in the description of the episode that will take you to my Patreon page where you can support the show, support me and support our learning community. And in the process, you will get all the patron-only benefits like premium episodes and audiobooks, premium assignments and PDF worksheets. With that being said, this is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.